probably not going to have a lot of option of changing any of that. So we're looking at supporting it for now. Yeah. Um, looking from the front on, again, we can see his toe in. We can see the different lengths in his toe from, from where your toenails are. The, the inside medial one is slightly longer. Okay. Um, and that is due to him. Hoof will always grow where blood is pushed to. Yeah. Hoof needs the materials and the minerals from the blood to help healthy hoof growth. So if a horse doesn't have flat and it's slightly on one side, the foot will grow where blood is pushed to. So his blood at the moment is being pushed more towards his medial toe, and that's where he always flares, because that's where the weight is less, blood is getting to, and it's allowing him to be able to grow. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Um, little preference, I always like to clean the foot out the back of my knife. I see some people using the front and like scraping all the salt. I don't like doing that, especially on thin sold horses. Um, and whenever you're in an exam, you get tired of brushing that sole out now. It's going to make you do less knifing. So you guys who struggle with your knife and leave knife marks, you're pretty much doing it already. With the wire brush. Use an old nail. Gonna make sure we clean this glass out. Put all that mud and bacteria in there. It's really important. And we can feel the shape of these clefts as well. It's telling you a bit of story about this foot. So as I'm cleaning this out, the lateral cleft is quite upright, even though it's wide. And then the medial, the frog is actually leaning over towards the medial side and actually goes in an angle. And that tells me a lot about this um, shape now. We got nice, well, not nice, we got big cavities showing the stress, a bit of bacteria in there, but the stress that these walls are under. So they need plenty of support. We've got really flat bearing surface heels, which is quite good, but we're gonna try and maintain them. Probably a little toe um, on it, but minimal. You know, frog trimming's really difficult. It's one of those that you can start, and if you, but you've got to think about how steel goes around feet. You know, we talk about this morning about pre-measuring your branches before turning them to know whether your shoe's gonna end up the right size. So in a hind, generally you'll lose half an inch by putting a quarter in a branch, in a front it'll be a bit more. Now this foot is as wide as it is long from what I can see at the moment. We're gonna measure it, um, which means it's quite a wide platform shoe. It's gonna use up a little bit more steel than I'm gonna expect. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit more. Okay. I think I've got a donation of a pair of chaps, don't you? I can't afford. a bit sad, right? I can't afford them, Bill. I've got to get you some. I think pink suits you. I'll rock anything. Okay, so important thing to remember when you're measuring feet, measure where you want the shoe to be, not the foot. Otherwise, you will be small, okay? Because that's what we're measuring for. We're measuring our steel for the shoe, not the foot, okay? So we're going to think about this foot now. I want a little bit of width up the lateral side because we know he toes in a bit. I want to give him a little bit of a platform. So I'm going to give him a good eighth up the outside. It's about just under seven inches wide. And we're going to, remember we're not going to remove much toe off this. So I want to measure where the circumference edge of the shoe is, not where the clip hole's been cut into, yeah? So I need to move that forward a little bit. And then we're going to measure to where we want the shoe to be. And that's six and a half. So he's, he's actually wider than he is longer, yeah? So he's gonna take up quite a bit of steel. So six and a half plus seven, um, six, 12, 13, 13 and a half inches. I like to add inch and three quarters for my toe. Anything from like 12 and a half inches <coughs> upwards. When we get to about 14, 15, then I start adding two inches when we're going really big. Um, but wider sections cover foot surface is quicker. That's the other thing I've taken into consideration. If I was going to use inch and a quarter, I wouldn't need to add two inches because it covers surface much quicker. You don't need to go around a, a broader radius with a skinny section. Um, so we've got six and a half plus seven, six, 12, 13 and a half plus my inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters, sorry. 14, 15 and a quarter that is, right? And that is for a normal, when we bump half an inch into a toe, we're, we are trying to take into account not only strengthening the toe, but generally 
everybody falls is slightly different. This is where practice comes in, but generally we will stretch each branch out a quarter of an inch from our fullering. But as we said this morning, I like to put a bit more in my toe. So I'm gonna add a bit more to that. So where do we get to? 13 and a half, 14 and a half, 15 and a quarter. That would be for a half inch bump. I like to put three quarters, so I'm gonna go 15 and a half. I'm gonna add the extra quarter of an inch that I know I'm gonna swallow off on my toe. Does that make sense? Okay, so just to check, double check that now. So I'm gonna use the hoof mapper on my foot just to demonstrate it to you guys. Ross doesn't have to, as I know he's never used it before. So just to confirm what we're seeing, so I'm gonna set this hoof mapper up now. I'm gonna be honest with myself, I have to put it smack bang in the middle of the foot. And I like to put these two branches to dissect my quarters, yeah? Cause that's where it's gonna be nice and easy for me to see my shoe dissect when I'm making it wedge for my quarter. So I'm gonna put it through the center of the foot on there and I'm gonna move this slider to where the toe needs to be, yeah? And then I'm gonna move this slider, doesn't matter which one you do, to where I want the shoe to be to go around that quarter, okay? Same on this one. So we know we want the lateral side to be a bit wider to help this foot. So from center to medial branch is three and a quarter inches, yeah? From center to lateral branch, it's actually three and an eighth. So that, this hoof mapper is helping me recognize the amount of difference there is in width from center to center and how it's been affected because of the conformation. It's helping me understand this foot already, yeah? And then I'm gonna move this to where I want my heels to be on my shoe. So, we're just gonna have a look at this shape now. we we'll try and understand it a little bit. So we broke it down into four proportions, okay? So we've got a nice broad radius toe here, quite broad, quite wide. Now looking at the two toe, um, toe sections here, I like to see the shape of a foot by reading the inside edge of a white line, the non-stretch bit, yeah? The outer border has got to be trimmed yet, and that's what can be manipulated and moved and stretched, so it's, I don't always trust to go off that. I'm shaping my shoe and my nail hole is going through the center of that shoe to mimic the inner border of the white line. because that's where it's strongest. That's what we're trying to shape. Yeah. So I'm breaking this down. I've got a nice big broad toe. Looking at this outer edge and then where this inner border of the white line would be. It's actually quite straight there. There's a tiny little radius in it and it comes to a nice tight quarter here through my branch, about an inch and a quarter long. So that I already know where to be on the bit when I put my quarter in. Yeah, you can you can visualize what an inch and a quarter is. Okay, same on this outside here, but because of this big cavity, the toe is stretched out. So that by the time we dress that up, actually, these two front toe quarters are going to mimic each other quite well. Yeah. Now moving on to the actual heel aspect. After we come through our quarter, so the medial quarter is about an inch and a quarter long. It's quite nice and sharp, and then this outer border coming into this heel where that inch is gonna sit on, it's actually very strict, yeah? And we can commit to that, because it's nice and easy to, uh, to understand and see from breaking down in this small portion. The lateral one is exactly the same, but I've noticed the quarter is a bit more longer and swooping. So if I put a nice, if I put a tight quarter in there, the same as the medial side, I'm actually probably gonna end up coming under my toe quarter a bit. So I wanna make sure I put that slightly longer, and that's gonna help me give that little bit of lateral support that this foot needs, yeah? And that's helped me break that foot down there. So now I've got this set up to so that foot, I can make my shoe inside of it and be confident that as long as it hits all those markers, that it's the right size and very close to the right shape. It's not always perfect, but it gets you very close. And then you're going back for one, maybe two hits here and there rather than another whole heat reshaping it. And you know, you're taking your burn time off the foot. The more times you go to that foot, the more times you burn, the lower it's getting. And then you start panicking, okay? So just got to remove.